What is up, everybody? Welcome back to some GK Productions coverage. My name is Gabriel Dow, and I'm here with Bobby Cox. What's up, everyone? We are here for the finals of our six-week six week winter series that we held. Uh, we've got a four-man card here. These guys battled it out over the six-week period, um, and these guys are the pros with the most points. So they will be battling it out for $250 cash, yeah. uh, winner take all. So don't leave anything on the table here. Uh, we got four guys on the card, Richard Y, Tommy Agent, Brandon Cawthorn, and Justin Robertson, all some of our Tulsa locals and good friends. So I expect these guys to tear up this course. Yeah, I'm excited to watch it. We play this course quite a bit here in Tulsa. So yeah, we definitely know the lines. Oh yeah. Uh, hole one, this is a par three, 222 feet. This is a new hole. Um, this course is actually newly redesigned um, as of this past year. Um, it used to be over to the left, but here you're going to be throwing over the creek on a hyzer um, and just have it crash back left to the basket. You do have to be careful of going OB left. There is a walk path that uh, plays OB over there. Yeah, and this hole seems really standard and straightforward, but that tree in the middle of the fairway is kind of sneaky. Like, I don't know about yeah. you, but oftentimes I think I throw it plenty hard enough, but it just goes right into that thing. And yeah. you got to be careful with the wind because you can easily get a gust over that OB. Yeah, Richard, that's a perfect shot from him. You really want to get it nice and wide and trust an overstable disc. Um, just hang it out over the creek and let it crash back left. We got Tommy, mostly a backhand player, but he's super accurate and... Just really consistent. Really good putter as well. And that's what I'm talking about. You just get a little bit of that wind gust, and that can happen very easily. We got Brandon Cawthorn. Looks like he's throwing a mortar here. Got it nice and high. That just needs to sit down. High. Barely oh, OB. And he's going to find the OB as well. And that can be a scary putt, too, putting right towards that water. Oh, yeah. And it's kind of a slight hill around the basket, too. So if you yeah. catch edge, I mean, there is definitely a possibility of rolling into the creek there. Done it myself. This is looking like a great shot from Justin. Yeah, he swung that out way right. And he goes through that tree, but he's going to be about 10 feet out. Most likely throwing a firebird there. we got Tommy to save us three. Oh. <sighs> Just a little bit right. Tommy's uh, probably probably the best putter in Tulsa. He hardly ever airballs. I mean, yeah, he's solid. Oh my gosh! And that's something you don't see very often at all from Cawthorn. Yeah, he's really good at damage control usually. And wow, he's gonna be starting off with a five. Yeah, that's no bueno. Yeah, and I say Brandon's probably top five players in Tulsa. Absolutely. He's got the most experience out of this card. Yep. His, for his forehand's come a long way oh, in the yeah. last two years. I mean, he's bombing them like 450 now. For sure. Pretty accurately. Cawthorn just tapping out the five. Unfortunate. Richard Y with our CTP. Showing off that GK Pro uh, Gator, I believe, he's got. Uh, we are on to hole two. This is a par three, 234 feet. The easiest hole out here at McClure. If you're not two in this one, then uh, probably shouldn't be on this card. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is just a standard hyzer over the creek. Nothing really in the way. Um, I, I don't see any of these guys taking apart here. I mean, you even have the backstop. The backstop wall, too. So if you go deep, you still have a chance of uh, hitting that birdie. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, definitely musky. I say the biggest mistake is hanging it too wide and just not quite clearing that water. Uh, I think Richard's going to be decently happy with that, <laughs> even though he's in the circle. Yeah. I believe that's Justin's softball team uh, shirt he's got on there. You know, he plays competitive softball. This is looking nice. Getting left real quick, and he's right underneath the basket. Tommy's 
Tommy going with the spike highs. We're getting it way up high. Oh, yeah. That'll be a tap in birdie for Tommy. And Cawthorn. Desperately needs a birdie. Same disc as last hole, it looks like. Might might have been an AVR3. Oh, my oh. gosh. <laughs> Just a Man. foot or two in front. Yeah. Perfect line. What a follow-up that would have been. I know. After five. Brought him back down Start to Start off plus two and get it right back. And that was very uncharacteristic for Richard. Yeah. Such a solid putter. First putt of the round. He had a tap in last hole, so bound to happen. Should be noted that they did play earlier this morning at a course nearby. Richard with an unfortunate par there. Easy two for Tommy. And J Rob tapping in the birdie. Moving to two under par. Cawthorn tapping in the two as well. And we are on to hole three. This is a par three, 506 feet. This is another newly redesigned hole out here. Um, the basket's tucked way back here in these trees. So uh, these guys are going to be throwing a little hyzer flip to flat. Um, maybe get a little flex to it. Try and bite off as much distance as it can. The really, the, the only danger on this hole is going to be the walking path up on the left. And then there is the OB Creek on the right as well. But uh, it's, it's really hard to find that creek because uh, as long as you get something that'll flip up to flat straight down the middle, um, it's not likely. Yeah, this is definitely the hardest three on this course. And I think a lot of the difficulty actually comes near the basket with the low ceiling. Um, oftentimes, if you're not in the right spot, you're going to be having to maybe even go over the top of those trees. Yeah. So, yeah, you can get in a tricky spot here. I mean, really, you're just trying to bomb off that tee. Tommy. Can be playing that left side. No issue there. Yeah. And I'll have the little hyzer down to the basket. Cawthorn flipping one out there. Gets a good amount of carry, and he's going to be just on the other side of that hill. He'll have a pretty open look from there. We got Richard gonna be most likely flexing one out there. Oh, that's turning quite a bit. Yeah, I think that cross? one got a, that one got away from him, and he actually found the water there. Wow! But it did hit one of the rocks, so he, he is gonna to be able to. Up. Yeah, he'll okay. be able to take it from there. That's tricky because he has no room for like a run up, really. Yeah, and he's still got a ways to go. About one fifty left. Yeah, it's not the easiest shot, but he that was really well executed done. that perfectly. Love a tap in four from there. Here's these branches I was talking about that you really got to maneuver through, and Tommy got away with one there. Yeah, there was a uh, he squeaked through. He'll have a tap in par for there. Brandon with not that great of an approach, at least for his standards. He'll be about just outside circle one. Justin on this right side. This right side's pretty nice because you can throw a, you know, he's got the firebird in hand. You can just throw it nice and low and trust that skip to get back left towards the basket. Looks like he's switching to an overstable mid. That's close enough, but uh, he definitely wanted more carry out of that. Brandon's going to be tapping in bogey here. Not the worst result, but certainly not what he wants. No. He's in full-blown attack mode at this point. Yeah, and Justin just didn't quite commit to that. Left it a little bit low. Yep. Richard with a good bogey save from where he was at. 
Looks like we got Tommy taking the lone par here. That's pretty surprising, actually. Yeah. Yeah, and mind you, these guys haven't played on camera in a while. We filmed Richard a lot still the off in uh, some of our earlier videos, and uh, we filmed Cawthorn and Tommy before as well. But, uh, you know, yeah, it is off season, and it's been a while for these guys. So they, there is some camera jitters there for sure. Uh, we are on to hole four. This is a part three. It is 491 feet. Uh, this one carries downhill, and then the basket is on the other side of this field um, going back uphill. So most of these guys are either going to be going with a roller or a big turnover shot um, to try and get as close as they can to the basket to give themselves a two look. Uh, but the two is very much a bonus birdie here. Yeah, I think I've only seen it a couple times. And that hill that the basket's on really makes your upshot quite a bit easier, unless you get the roll away. But yeah. you can really just jam it into that hill, and uh, no worries on the power. That's a good spot. Yeah. As long as you don't have any trees in your way on your upshot, it's, it's going to be really a good shot. Really yeah. yeah. I mean, the upshot from there, you got the hill as the backstop, so you can pretty much just throw it as hard as you want towards the basket. Justin, he said, dodge that tree, and he unfortunately nicks it, and that's going to yeah. lengthen his upshot a little bit. Yeah, and that's a pretty common mistake. Um, you can turn it over a little bit too much out of your hand, and it'll find that tree, which is pretty much the worst spot you can be on this this hole, or the baseball field left out of bounds as well. Yeah, I mean, that's why I just play the forehand, sweep it out left, just a big hyzer, and just get in an open spot. Cawthorn just mashed that one, and he's going to have a two look from there. It'll be long, but a look nonetheless. Are we getting a roller here? I would guess yeah. so. <whistles> just dodges that cement there. And none of these rollers wanting to stand up and go right. Yeah, if that would have hooked up, that would have gave him a, like 60 extra feet. Oh, yeah. He's going to be right there next to Tommy. Easy par from there. Justin keeping it nice and low, trusting that Firebird wow, skip. Wow, look at that shot. Harked for the par. Good recovery shot. Tommy probably going with a putter or mid-range. That'll play. Oh, how unfortunate is that? And wow. he might have a little bit of a low ceiling with those branches. Yeah, that I've been right over there side. Before. Yeah, it's not fun. And if you hyzer, like if you airball and hyzer, I mean, you're bound to go down that hill. So he's got to be careful here. What a stick. Oh, oh man. Oh, it stayed in. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't a remember replay if that at this backside. Look at this backside. Oh, my. Wow. wow. That was so close to popping out. Yeah, you, Good stick you had one similar to that a couple weekends ago. Oh, yeah. But it did not stay in. Because no. <laughs> there was ice on the rim. There was ice. There was a, yeah, yeah, it was a solid half inch of ice. It was an ice round. A little bit sketchy on the tee pads. Cawthorn tapping in the par. Yeah, you're stoked with the three here. J Rob will stay at one under par. And we are on to hole five. This is a par three, 236 feet island hole. As you can see, you have the walking path on the left and the walking path on the right that play out of bounds. Um, as you can see, there is a, uh, a slight hill as well that you kind of have to keep in mind. Most of these guys are going to be going with either a putter or a mid range. Just try and play it into that hill and uh, have it check up next to the basket. Pretty pretty easy hole for these guys. And that's exactly how you ride it up. Yeah, I don't know about you, but for me, it seems like this green is just so slick. Like, it seems like you hit with, like, a barely of a wrong angle, and that thing is going, uh, going out of bounds. Yeah. But, yeah, these guys should be getting birds here. to sit down and it does oh and the curl up perfect you seen any forehands on this hole yet no i haven't either i mean there's <laughs> that, that left to right downhill so it just kind of takes the forehand out of play oh and this is a complete errant shot from 
Brandon. I don't know how that thing. I don't know wow. how that stayed in. That was super high and started up in the middle. Yeah, there had to have been a left to right wind right. to kind of force that disc down. Yeah, and he's gonna have a scary putt from up there. And that needs to hook up. That was a very weird looking flight. flight. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it was on the hyzer angle the entire it way, but carried straight. straight. That, yeah. yeah, yeah, there had to have been a left to right wind. Oh no! Sit down. And this is also what can happen on this hole. Dude, Brandon is not having a blast so far. Yeah, and you can tell he's a little bit frustrated after that. Here's Tommy for two. Tommy, that's it's a rare miss. Yeah, you you don't see that ever. And his misses really. are honestly like banned most of the time. Yeah. And Richard as well. I just hope Justin can make his birdie putt. <laughs> yeah. Case of the camera jitters here on this hole. There we go. And that's not a bogey you want on that McClure Park. This is definitely one of the must-get twos out here. Looks Here's like Richard uh, take some strokes from the card. Or Justin, sorry about that. Justin moving to two under par, and he is two strokes ahead of the next person on the card. Just off of this one hole. I know. It's that's so crazy. surprising to see these guys play it like that. Tommy staying at even. And we are on to hole six. This is a par three, another newly redesigned hole. This one, they moved a little bit more left. Opens up the shot a little bit more, but the uh, shot is a little bit trickier because um, it used to be just a big hyzer. Now it's just a straight shot or a forehand. Um, I mean, it's it's kind of a weird angle. It's It carries downhill as well, so you really have to have good distance control here. Yeah, for me, it's like I... I, I seem to choose the more difficult route every time I play this hole. I'll throw my first shot. I usually do like a big or a big forehand hyzer on that left. It won't work out, and then I'll just be like, wow, why didn't I just throw a mid-range right out the middle? Right. I, th I think the, the mid-range out right the middle is definitely the play, but for some reason it's just wide enough to where you want to get a little bit tricky with it, and it backfires often, at least for me. Yeah, and this is a nice safe play from Tommy. Yeah. Just throwing a nice and straight mid-range right up the gut. Even if you end up a little bit left, you're still inside the circle. I mean, I've seen people just try to shove it at the top of that tree down by the basket, and you're left with, you know, max a 40-footer. And Cawthorn throwing the forehand, sawing it off a little bit, but he's still got a look from there. He's about circle's edge. Richard going with the forehand. That could skip straight. Yeah, that's pretty well short. It's it's such a weird hole. I, I feel like you got to play it to understand it. <laughs> yeah. Justin will just have a little tap in for three. Here's Richard for a much needed birdie. Just a little bit of a misrelease there. The There's a solid putt with a fantastic looking putt. Just slightly pro side, fell right into the chains. Yeah, we were so fortunate with this weather for mid-January. I mean, it was like, what, 55 and sunny? Yeah, hardly any wind. Yeah. Yeah, and being in Oklahoma, it's like you got to appreciate this because the next day it could be snowing. Richard tapping in the unfortunate par. Justin making the par as well. We'll stay at two under, and we are on to hole seven. This is a par three, 402 feet. Uh, one of the more difficult par threes out here at McClure Park. Um, this because the line's really tricky. You you want to throw something that will flip up and carry right, um, but you can't overthrow it and you can't underthrow it because as you can see, there's the the creek right there as well, which plays OB, and then there's a tree on the right side where if you turn it over too much, you're gonna find that tree in you have a very high likelihood of rolling straight into the creek. So um, these guys are really just going to pump one out, try and get over the creek and give themselves a look for two. 
Yeah, and I think the best angle to get that to is a forehand if you have the distance. But with the forehand, it, I mean, if you get a little bit too much hyzer, it just, it just rides along that OB water and you end up OB. So you got to get that forehand to go dead straight and then finish at the, at the, at the very end. And this is kind of what I'm talking about. Cawthorn stays in, I believe. It does, okay. Yeah, those ro those big rocks down there by the water saves a lot of discs. Justin taking the back door out. Yeah, there's yeah. a line. There, there is a line there, there as well. Line. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a little bit tighter and a little bit riskier because if you catch one of those, yeah, if you catch one of those trees, you're you're way behind and uh, you've got a low ceiling to the basket. So he made it through though. Yeah, and Richard's got plenty of power with that forehand. He can get it there for sure. This one's on the little bit of a safer side, but yeah, he's gonna be over there with Justin. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just rolling back and forth on that concrete. And that concrete is not OB. Yeah, luckily, it, it, it is playing <laughs> safe today. Cawthorn trying to throw it in, but he'll have a tap in three. Here is J Rob. Oh yeah, he's not too thrilled with that no. effort there. Yeah, he wanted to run that one. Tommy. Oh, oh, no. The Tommy walk yep. backfired. He was, he, he, he's, he's well known for <laughs> walking those in. Yes. He walks in every butt. Richard from about 40, 45 feet out. Look at that. That's a great shot. Maybe that's the momentum he needs. Yeah. Moving himself back to even. He's right back in it. Yeah, I really did think Tommy made that putt. Right. I mean, it was perfect. Looking Just very a good. little bit too right. Cawthorn tapping in the par. Looks like we're going to have J-Rob doing the same thing. Still holding that lead, though. But Tommy making moves. Hole 8, this is a par 3. It is 298 feet. Another newly redesigned hole. You've got two lines. There's a... Uh, backhand route on the right side which is a little bit more tight then there is a forehand or turnover gap on the left side as well uh, the basket is up this hill so you do kind of have to throw it a little bit higher than you think so uh i'd say the most common play is going to be what rich is doing here the forehand yeah and with that forehand you get a little bit of that hill right of the basket to kind of slow you down if you need to yeah unless you're richard and you skip on top of it uh, that's, he's still going to have a look from there. It'll be a yeah. long look, but not not bad at all. Tommy going right at it with a backhand. Didn't quite get that hyzer angle. Yeah, and he's going to have that tree right in his way. Kind of surprised to see Brandon go on backhand here. Right. Maybe his forehand on the last hole didn't feel too good, so he's switching it up a little bit. He's going to be on that left side. Yeah, this is also one of those holes where you can feel like you had a great drive and still get robbed with the tree hit. Right. Have we not seen any uh, tomahawks from Justin yet? Not yet. That's shocking. Yeah. Justin's very well known for his tomahawks. Oh, box. well, that's why he's not throwing them. He doesn't need it. Exactly. Beautiful that shot. A great shot from Justin. And Cawthorn just laying it up there. Easy three there. <sighs> Tommy got that oh. so high. Yeah. <laughs> he was trying to get a little Plinko too. Oh, could have been back to back. Sweet birdies, but great run from Richard. Here's J Rob for the lone two. There you go. Moving to three under par. Tommy taking the three. He'll stay at one under par. Richard staying at even. 
All right, we are on to hole nine. This is a par three, 407 feet, super open hole. Um, this is really just a, a bomber hole. Um, you're just throwing out something that'll flip up straight, kind of ride the right side of that hill there and um, try and get as close to the basket as you can. You do have to be careful of hyzering out too soon, but uh, I mean, aside from that and either turning it over OB, that's really the only danger. This is uh, uh, a very gettable hole for for all these guys. Yeah, I think going right at it is really more of the play because uh, you do often see those hyzers just riding down that hill and end up being like 70 feet out. So we'll see what these guys do. This is looking like a nice shot. Yeah, there you go. That'll, get, that'll at least give him a look. Yeah. He's outside the circle there, but definitely, definitely a putt. That's just way too low. He'll be at the bottom of the hill, about a 40-footer uphill. Tommy is kind of in the same situation, just a little bit more left. Yeah, long putt for both those guys. Have enough juice. Nah, it doesn't nope. really get a skip either. Yeah. Didn't quite get it as high as I think he wanted it. Good thing about these putts, though, is you can run the crap out of them and really no worries. Yeah. Tommy gives Tommy. it a good bid. Ugh. Richard. It's a little bit too high, and it's Justin for the lone two. Oh, and that was horrible. Yeah, <laughs> miss very miss release. Worst friend, so that was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Justin. No, I'm not. <laughs> we got Brandon tapping in his par. Surely he's feeling that sense of urgency, being two over par right now with Justin at three under. It's funny because like Probably. these like these four players are the ones that usually kill this course in like oh, minis that we yeah. play. Like these are the four that are up usually up there. Oh yeah. I mean, it's honestly surprising to see these guys uh, shoot like this on this course. I mean, it's definitely not the best showing from these guys, but I'm sure they'll clean it up here on the back nine. Uh, so far, we got Justin Robertson leading at three under par. Tommy's right behind him at one under par. Richard at even and Cawthorn at two big. So. Um, Justin's holding the lead. See if he can stick it out here on the back nine. And uh, we appreciate you guys for watching this front. Yeah, if you guys enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. You can check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And we'll see you guys for the back nine.